we have an exciting block of uh, AI ML AD sessions to be presented uh, by bright intellectual minds of the Julia community. Uh, the first talk is about NeuroTree, a differentiable tree operator adapted for the treatment of tabular data newly introduced in Julia by NeuroTrees.jl. Um, a general operator composable with the building blocks of the Flux ecosystem in Julia. Please welcome Jeremy Dejani Bouchard. Thank you. <laughs> Great, thank you. So I'm uh, Jeremy. I'm the head of science at uh, Evovest, a portfolio management uh, firm specialized in uh, public global equities. We follow a systematic uh, investment process, so that means we go from data to decision with uh, little to no human intervention. Uh, this means that we rely extensively on predictive models and our ability to characterize future stock, uh, the, re the future re patterns of stock returns. Uh, to do so, we, uh, our models are fed primarily by tabular data or multivariate time series that we represent as tabular data. For those kind of models, the dominant form of algorithm have been gradient boosted trees for almost a decade now, thanks to Igiboost, but also other libraries like, like GBM, CatBoost, or EvoTrees. Uh, despite all the rage in uh, deep learning, there hasn't been a, a strong contender that is, uh, an that is based on our architecture that reuse the traditional uh, building blocks of neural networks like dance, uh, convolution, transformer, or other attention-like mechanism. So the approach taken with NeuroTree was to start with what works well, gradient boosted trees, and make the most direct translation into a differentiable flavor. And by doing so, the aspiration was to tackle some known limitation in trees. Two of them are that they are myopic, only looking at the immediate best split when we perform, uh, when we grow a tree. So that means that we ignore potential uh, so, uh, going for a suboptimal split, which might reveal a greater optimum down the tree structure. Another limitation is the representation capacity of trees. To illustrate that, let's take a look at this shallow tree of a depth two. In such a tree, there's only four uh, potential uh, distinct values. So if we have a linear relationship between the feature and the target value, uh, the, at the best, only, uh, we can only get the third case with four steps. That's not optimal, and we'll need a large number of trees in our stack in order to get a reasonable approximation for such linear, a linear relationship. And uh, back to the tree structure, uh, why aren't they differentiable? It's because that the split node, the tree uh, gray node that we see at the top, uh, perform hard decisions. And they are, um, uh, so for a given observation, uh, there's only a single leaf that is mapped or associated to this observation. In this case, leaf number three, as highlighted by the green arrows. Another perspective is that this tree structure give us the information about the probability for the observation to belong to any of the terminal leaf. With classical trees, those probability are all zeros except for one leaf, leaf number three, where the probability is one. So neural tree, what we do is we start with a full, complete binary tree structure, and what we attempt to do is to learn the probability associated for each of the split node. Once we know the node weights, the remaining task to get a prediction is quite trivial. We just need to accumulate the node weight, take a view on the last node that, co that corresponds to the terminal leaf weights. Then all we need to do is to do the dot product between those leaf prediction and the leaf weights. So those leaf weights, uh, the sum of the weights are, can be have an inter uh, probability interpretation. The sum is one here. So the remaining ingredient to get the differentiable tree is to see how do we have a differentiable or smooth node weight. As you can see on the top diagram, you might recognize the good old dense operator, and that's really uh, all that, that uh, there is to understand here. So there are two hard decisions performed in a split node. The first is to select a feature that is done by doing the product of the dense uh, weight times the input feature. So that acts as the uh, mask over our input features. And then the bias addition allows to control the second hard decision, which is the selection of the threshold value, which will decide whether 
an observation is sent to the left or the right child. Finally, the sigmoid activation allows us to project this into the probability domain, and now we have our node weight. So the neural tree structure is not only about a single tree, but a collection of trees. So all we need to do is to concatenate the learnable parameters all together, and these are the, all the learnable parameters in a neural tree. So the first two uh, are the learnable parameters associated with the dense-like operation, and the third one is uh, the uh, leaf predictions. Computing the node weights is the compute intensive part of NeuroTree. Yet the algorithm itself is pretty simple, with a little catch is that it performs element-wise mutation, which is tricky for autodiff uh, systems, as you're probably aware. So the solution is simply to go for uh, implementing custom gradients by using uh, chain rules, both on CPU and GPU. So what I've described so far is an actual simple um, neural network operator, similar to what uh, we can find in the NNLib library. So the neural tree, as you can see here, is, can be built just like a dense operator, specifying uh, the dimensionality of the input features and of the output uh, feature, as uh, each leaf can output an actual vector of predictions. In neural tree models, uh, we bring some helper in order to build actual models, uh, which are just a simple flux chain. So in its simplest form, a neural tree model is just a chain that, compose, is, that is composed by a batch norm followed by a neural tree operator. Neural tree models implement uh, a MLJ compatible API as well as an internal one in order to help in some uh, cases where we want to have uh, easy access to early stopping mechanism by uh, tracking a metric on a evaluation data. Does it work? Well, we perform a benchmark on uh, six common data sets of varying size. Uh, common data sets found in benchmarks that we found in uh, Igiboost and Catboost uh, own benchmarks. And what uh, came out is that uh, NeuroTree was the single best model on both the year uh, data set on regression and also the boson X uh, classification problem. Uh, noteworthy is that it was competitive with the, all the other uh, classical gradient boosted tree libraries on small data sets, which is not uh, usually the best uh, kind of condition for uh, gradient based models. On the flip side, uh, on the ranking task, it wasn't as great. So um, uh, the reason for that is not, uh, is not on the task itself, but likely more about the nature of the data. So for example, if there are missing values or uh, unusual skewed distributions, this is where the soft decision process might be less than ideal than the uh, hard uh, decisions that the classical trees give us. An interesting aspect about the algorithm is that it can bring more signal diversification. So uh, what is shown here is the correlation between the prediction uh, between all of the benchmark uh, algorithms. So on the lower left, you can see darker colors, which match lower correlation, which means that there's a higher ensembling uh, potential by using its signal. So finally, some uh, future direction, performance optimization, always uh, better support for categor categorical features uh, through embedding, uh, integration with Enzyme in order to get rid of the custom gradients, and finally expand the scope of the neural tree models in order to be a more general engine for uh, tabular data. So I Thank hope you I much. managed to cram everything I wanted to say uh, in time. Thank you for the talk. Let's give applause. <laughs> Now's the time for the audience to also qu ask questions. Thanks, fantastic uh, package and talk. Um, I'm from Particle Physics, which provided you the uh, Higgs boson uh, benchmark. So <laughs> we were fascinated by the paper you cited, which shows you that sometimes table performs better, uh, you know, tree dec decision tree performs better or even, uh, sim or even better than deep learning models. And we have papers in our field observing similar things. So the question is, what kind of intuition do, should we have on these different tree models and about their performance, and also, I mean, if you can't answer in just a few lines, maybe some kind of literature pointer would also be helpful. Thank you. Oh, thanks for the question. I, 
couldn't point to a literature pointer, although there's some paper about like why the tabular models still, uh, tree models still outperform uh, deep learning models on tabular datasets. Uh, otherwise, I think it's uh, uh, like the ability to uh, efficiently uh, navigate through uh, like the large um, feature space, like uh, the multi in tabular data, like each, uh, each entry is a different dimension. And I think the tree structure is quite efficient as navigating this uh, uh, feature space. And I, I think there's something that uh, made some noise about like a uh, Komogorov or Arnold structure that I think was an interesting uh, kind of perspective about uh, navigating those kind of uh, dimensional data uh, feature space uh, common to tabular data. So that will be like just my quick answer, but uh, happy to explore more uh, after. So in a regression mode, is your output then smooth? Uh, yeah, the smoothness comes from the fact that the probability associated with each of the leaf is uh, is smooth. So uh, that means that if uh, the association, so the term, the prediction in the leaf is a constant, but uh, given that an observation, if you uh, if you tweak, for example, if the, you move on a given variable, it's not a hard decision going into left or right. So by increasing uh, a smooth increase in the probability of belonging to that leaf, you uh, you're able to get uh, a smoother uh, output from uh, from a differentiable tree. That's the. That's it.